Welcome to the Tomb of Illumination, people. If you haven't seen my videos before, you might want to go back and check them out. I'm just going to lead straight into this video from my previous video. About the star rotations, the two hemispheres, the central and northern hemisphere, and how the southern hemisphere star rotations revolve around the central northern hemisphere. It's all, well, all proof of the flat earth system, never shown to man before. It's all here, you can all check. But I made a big discovery, and my previous video is um, I showed how it worked. A couple of guys have made the model for me, so check that out. And, but anyway, I've just realized that this, this southern image in our night sky is 33.3, 33 if you want, degrees larger than the northern hemisphere. It's a 2 to 3 ratio, so that would make this... 33 degrees larger than the northern hemisphere per opposite latitude so people are trying to understand the the alignment the celestial alignments they should they say if something's here it should appear, appear out here but one you have to realize that this is a lot smaller so the fraction you'll get here or whatever's coming off here, your nighttime image, you will get over here expanded by 33.3 degrees. So there's a difference, there's a variation already you have to look for. But you can only see it within man's hour. But you know the problem we have is the Milky Way. That's when the Milky Way is is an, align, is an alignment. There's a Milky Way in both hemispheres. And this one man's hour is that alignment where the Milky Way is between the two hemispheres. And what you weren't taught is that the Milky Way, we don't live in the Milky Way, we're from the Milky Way. The Milky Way passes over us every night. You see it come from the west, swing over and disappear to the south. East to the west I should say, but it's it's basically coming out of the, the southern hemisphere, the, the southeast, south, southeast, east, north, swings right around, west, southwest, south. You're not taught all that stuff, but that's how it works. You have to check out all my other videos. But in the north, it swings out of the north, comes, swings around like this. From the, appears to come around through the tropical gap west. So the Milky Way is a separate entity. It's a separate helix tube, helix shaped tube. It's called the umbilical cord basically of Earth that swings around over our sky. And that alignment is bang on at this point here. So that's a different, that's a separate star formation. So because of that, it hides it hides the star alignments between the two hemispheres. So we're never going to see, unfortunately for me, showing you people, we're not going to see what's under here, the background stars and the background stars here. Because it's overlaid, go back to Abydos, the Egyptian overlays of the reliefs, it's all told in ancient Egyptian, the Medica, everything else, it's overlaid the background stars. So you've got this Milky Way spinning around this side in the southern hemisphere. As it comes around the northern hemisphere, they both have an alignment. It's overlaying, overlaying the background stars. So refer back to my model, the last video, you'll see how it works. But as soon as it turns away from this alignment, it starts warping away. In man's arc of horizon, you have to understand that the alignment is man's arc of horizon. North, he's always north to south. That's his rotation, he gets it there. That's with the camera. If you, if you star trail with a camera, you see the circle. Um, so you have to understand there's two systems. There's the 
one's main system going on here but there's the overall earthly system which is the same but it goes all the way around the earth so we can stand there and just look at the stars and watch them drifting west but if you don't if you stay within your arc of horizon this is your this is your perspective of the universe you see it go around loop you, no you don't sorry you'll see it you don't actually you don't see it only clue is at the solstice when you do see it go more southwest if you're in the southern hemisphere but in actual fact it is going around looping and then coming back out around for you to see it again at exactly the same place the next night that's how it works but on an earthly scale it's wandering all the way around here doing a if you're there doing a loop here then coming back out because it's all to do with the s curve the s curve in the center of the central vortex above the arctic that's what it looks like side on but if you look down into the vortex it looks like this that's the create mother of creation and there's the female the milky way comes in and what does this look like what does the fetus start with there's your fetus it's the mother of creation it's the physical world it's the spiritual world the godly realm we're all, we're all we've all come from we come from this milky way we're not in it it is a separate entity has its own set of stars massive obviously and it comes into the female all the background stars are in here that's the vortex that turns so you see all these stars around here those are all the stars around here then, but then along comes the old Milky Way and covers, covers the alignment between the two hemispheres this is why man cannot see the alignment it comes like a thief in the night it's hidden from man he will never know this is why you have to rely on the zodiac this is why earth is built on the zodiac it's the four corners so you have to understand and follow the zodiac to know when when's your full moon your moon sign you can track that and you know your full moon sign ends up um, now it's getting complicated you'll know when the full moon is but it's it's where the uh, it's where it is in relation to the Milky Way because the Milky Way catches up and runs over it so that's the it's man's hour it's your divine hour and if you're not consciously awake you miss it so there has to be this alignment where the full moon ends up down here and you've obviously got the sun in the Milky Way so that's the alignment okay so it's all this is God's creation he's he's hidden it I cannot prove to you there's this alignment now you can only equate all the other evidence to show that this does happen when you when you rotate this you turn the all these are turning but as this turns this, the, the reflection the stars are all moving around like this but in man's one arc of horizon he doesn't look east or west and he's got his time lapse camera at star trail he just sees this rotation like this but the stars don't do full rotations they go in and come out because they're, they're coming in from here into the circle and then they move out but there's always this permanent rotation in star trail photography there's three systems really so you've got that but then if man just looks at it in his arc of horizon he'll see the stars cross over his over his horizon and they do it do appear you'll see in the solstice they do with the sun anyway you see it more go southward 
I'm talking from the southern hemisphere, okay? Okay, you see it come more from the south, disappear more from the south. So it does do that loop. But on a worldly scheme, it's all, it's all moving this way. Imagine this whole rotation picture just creeping around and it goes right around in 24 hours. So anyway, I'll put this. So realize, did I go through this? 33 degrees. This is 33 degrees larger than this. Look at the number again. Divine number. And what did I say earlier on? The southern hemisphere beyond the Tropic of Capricorn to the pole is 66.6 degrees. That's what's in Revelations. It's nothing sinister, evil. No, you've all been misled. You don't understand the Bible. And it's 66 degrees from Cancer to the northern pole. Because the tropical gap is 2 times 23.4. So there's 46.8. So 46.8, add those two 666s, you've got 180 degree. 180 degree meridian from the north, from the north pole, north pole to the south pole. So north to the south, there's a nice, yeah. this is what I put on, uh, on my Facebook, but now I can't prove it. But I'm the first man to talk about it. And somehow I can prove, well, I'll probably prove it one day. World First 2023, my name, announced that the southern stars are a mirrored reflection of the northern stars, but in a 33.3 degree larger expanse. So, the ether, the expanse is enlarged by 33%. Whether the star itself has been expanded. I don't think so because it's a weaker it's a weaker field out there anyway because it's been stretched. So I think the star might just look the same image if it's reflected from there to there, but it's the weaker stretched ether that that star is projected into. Uh, 33.3 .3 degree larger expanse than its opposite latitude, moving in the opposite direction parabolic in brackets. So, what was I going to say then? Okay, so, and it all depends on latitude. So if, on, if you're on the earth, if you're on the earth, everything later in latitude is all relative to the observer. This is what general relativity is all about. They just change all the names from ether to Cosmic radiation, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, there's your latitude. So let's say this is north, but then you have the bigger southern field, you could say. So this, let's say you're 20 degrees north, 20 degrees south. There's a 33, if I've got my maths right, I don't know. There's a 33% expansion. Between these two, it all depends on latitude because we expand as we move south. Now I'm making things really complicated. You've got to refer back to the Gleason map. Everything expands out from the centre, but we expand with it. But the land itself, the terra firma, is fixed. So if I've expanded, I'm not just stepping across one meter now out here. I'm stepping across three meters because I'm three times as big. So it's all relative to the observer. I'm a giant out here in this big field. I'm a big man. There's me. I'm a big man. Back in, I'm just a little man. That's the troll. That's the giant. In Norse mythology, they talk about all this stuff. I've expanded in the field. People need to get their head around that. They want to understand the flat earth. It's complicated. It's probably why your elites, Freakmasons, don't talk about it. It's a bit complicated. 
they just come up with the ball idea, but the ball is only a coordinate system. That is only a coordinate system. It's nothing to do with reality. So there you have it, guys. There's the alignment. It's 33% bigger than this. So, and you know, how wide is this Milky Way? That could be like a third of the, the width of our night time, our night sky. No, don't think so. Not that big. But you can all get out there. You can see it go over you. You'd obviously have to be in a nice unpolluted area to get a good clear sky. Uh, but you'll see it in the south. It swings around this way and then it ends up being dead straight and it swings around out again out to the west, southwest for a southern hemisphere observer. Dear. I thought I could find the line map, but it just came to me today, last, this morning I think, or last night. I've known before, but I never really put my head to it, but because of this, um, I never stopped and realised, you know, there's 33 degrees, 33%, 33 degrees, 33 percent bigger. I keep saying this degrees, percent. It's 33% bigger than that. So whatever that, whatever, whatever that slither there is at night, you're seeing here. But look, it's 33% bigger, more widely dispersed, in a weaker field because it's more stretched. This is the weak force, the strong force, more contracted energy in one place, more dispersed out here. So, you know, as long as you understand that it's per latitude, opposite latitude. So you can't start getting, don't start getting confused that this here is 33 degrees bigger than that part back there. No, it's the opposite latitude. It's all mirrored, remember? Mirrored. It's all written in ancient text. Plenty of mirror, mirrors. Okay, guys, I'll leave it at that. Thumbs up, spread the good news, likes, share, put it everywhere.